Okay, we've looked at some cool old cameras together on this channel, but prepare yourself for one of the best yet. This camera is quirky from the outside and inside, yet strangely practical, and it is one of my favorite cameras to shoot to date. Welcome back to the Snappiness YouTube channel, where I shoot cool old cameras and you are all enablers to this addictive habit. When you start down the old camera rabbit hole in search of, I don't know, fun and good times, you quickly realize that a lot of cameras are fundamentally very similar. And it doesn't matter the brand, they will often have the same sensors, same general body design, and same features. In reality, this is actually really great because to take good photos, you just need a decent sensor adequate control and good glass. And old cameras like the Canon 40D and Nikon D80 do that wonderfully and for very cheap. But who said being practical is always fun? And that's how we ended up here. This is the Sony F828 and it is part of a very different series of cameras Sony released from the late 90s to the early 2000s. It's an eight megapixel CCD, non-interchangeable lens, prosumer camera released back in 2004. I bought it in a search for a break from the ordinary and boy, did I get just that. My first outing with the camera was just after a huge rainstorm here in Southern Texas and when it rains here, it floods. So I took off on my bike to survey the damage and give my freshly unboxed, yet very dusty, Sony F828 a whirl. Without practicing with it too much before, I found it surprisingly intuitive to use, and I was quick to adapt to the controls. But forget the controls for a second, look what it can do. The whole rotating body thing may seem gimmicky, but let me tell you, I was instantly converted. You'll never hold a camera at waist level again without thinking, man, this is really uncomfortable bending my wrist 90 degrees. Plus, you look like a mad genius using it in public. Or just mad. I'll let you decide. Back to the controls, the outside of this camera is adorned with buttons, and this seemed to be the method that most digital cameras from the early 2000s took. Whether it was actual software limitations or just human limitations, cameras often had physical buttons in place of menu diving. And I actually kind of like this approach. You've seen the images from this camera. Would you have guessed that they were taken on a camera with an RGB-E color filter array? Yeah, I'll admit, I, I wouldn't be able to either without a side-by-side -side comparison. But the Sony F828 is the only camera to have been made with this special red, green, blue, emerald color filter. And what that really means is that it proved to be completely pointless and nobody else wanted it. But give them props for trying something new. But that being said, after looking at hundreds of images I've taken with this camera now, I am convinced that it does have a unique look to it. Whether that look is preferable or even can't be replicated in post for free on any camera, I'll leave that for you to discuss in the comments. Check out my blog post to see side-by-sides with the same sensor with an RGB color filter array. The lens on this camera is a 28 to 200 millimeter f2 to f2.8 equivalent fixed lens with a cheap looking sticker on it that declares the Zeiss branding. But besides the marketing, I actually found this lens to be quite lovely. 
Using macro mode and zooming in, one can get some smooth bokeh, and the lens is usually sharp across the zoom range and at all apertures, even wide open. It has a mechanical zoom instead of an electronic one, which is nice, and it zooms easily. It even has a manual focus ring, which is also nice for a camera like this, even if it is focused by wire. The only big negative I noticed with the lens is it has terrible purple fringing. Like, comically so, the worst I've ever seen. But beyond getting some good laughs because of it, just avoid high highlights and backlit scenarios, and, and if you do run into it, just edit it in post. It's not too bad. And there's some other stuff too, like the camera accepts both CF cards and the Sony memory stick, which died, but looks pretty cool. It's like a stick of gum. It can even shoot video. So, you know, there you go. You have to respect these experimental camera designs that manufacturers have tried over the years. And the Sony F828 is one of the best I've tried yet. Sure, the four color filter array seems to be little more than just a marketing ploy, but the CCD sensor itself is great. The controls and handling of the camera are a joy to use and the lens delivers good images. This is a camera you won't see people shooting or shooting anything like it. And I think that gives it some bonus points. I bought mine for $35, which if you can find one at that price, I think it's great fun. But like many cameras that are old and uncommon, the scarcity factor often artificially drives up the prices. So just be patient, watch it for a while, and when you find one that's a good price, pick it up. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it entertaining and maybe a little bit informative. If you like this kind of stuff, subscribe to the channel and hop on over to my free forum where there are people like you, believe it or not, who shoot weird old cameras. They're also nice and helpful and inspiring. Remember to go out there and shoot with whatever camera you have, and until next time, happy snapping.